Hi, everybody. It's Chuck Gilmore with Power to Sing live <laughs> at last. A um, couple minutes early now since the since I timed it off at 20 after the hour, but um, I think I'm I think I'm good now. Uh, I, I, I apologize. It's one of those things that happened um, without <laughs> without warning. So what happens? I I had everything set up early today and uh, went out to do something in my other office and came back in like three minutes before start time, getting ready to push the button. And not I not only my computer crashed, and so it had the bio thing on it, and <laughs> so I tried getting it up and live, and it didn't. I didn't have a camera. The camera it wasn't finding the camera. So I want to make sure now that you can at least hear me and you can see me. All right, we'll verify that, and then uh, you know we'll we'll go from there. So uh, I uh, just want to verify that we're on here. So if you can. You can see me and hear me. Just let me know, okay? Um, and that will help. Okay, so uh, right now, let's see here. I think this is okay. So I've got a couple comments here from Mr. Uh, Mr. T, and uh, I'm doing well, thank you. Uh, Sundas Shining, hi, good. L Gordon says loud and clear. Thank you, Gordon. Lavinsky, hi, nice to have you here. And uh, Partha, hi. Um, I, I'm joining from Assam. Awesome to have you today. Thank you for being here. Great. So you can hear me and see me, and that is uh, encouraging. Okay. So um, let me just, uh, let me see here. All right, that's still there, and I was hoping to do something here, but I. I won't do that. Okay, very good. Well, let's talk about what we're talking about today. So this is uh, Power to Sing Live, number 167. And um, we're going to talk about singing high notes or how to sing high notes without, without the voice cracking and without it straining. This is a very, very big topic. And this is kind of like the crux of almost everything that every singer wants to be able to do in the affirmative, in the positive. They want to be able to sing higher without having any strain or without having any cracking, breaking, uh, other crazy things happening. And uh, hey, Dion, nice to have you here today from El Paso. Good to see you. I think we were scheduled for maybe later today. Uh, so I look forward to that. And uh, Arthur, hi, loud and clear. Great. Thank you. Uh, Gordon S. Scotland sends its best wishes. Well, Gordon, the Gilmore name is uh, in the was in the Morrison clan, from what I understand. And we are our the family, the Gilmore family was from Scotland, uh, had to go to Ireland for different problems and then came to the US many, many years ago, back in the Probably late say, 1700s. So someday I'd like to come and see Scotland and see if I could find a Gilmore tombstone someplace. Um, okay, so uh, Levinsky says he's got a lot of questions for me today, and I'm looking forward to those. Let me just, uh, uh, Arthur from London, cool. Yeah, so I did my DNA, you guys, and like 85% of it is Wales. England and uh, Scotland and Ireland. So those are like the, the big ones. I have a good percentage from the Germ Germanic region and then one from Norway or some, some genetics from uh, Norway. So um, I'm very European, <laughs> even though the Gilmores have been here since the late 1700s. Anyway, okay, so now, let's get back. Let me just ask you this question. Have you ever had a crack or um, something like that? You're singing and boom, your voice cracks on a high note. Or have you ever seen that happen in another singer? Let me know in the comments below. Has it ever happened to you? 
<clears throat> has your voice ever cracked in a performance? Have you ever seen that happen in a performance? I have. We were attending the um, a, a big re a big concert here in in Salt Lake City, Utah, and we had a guest artist. They were he was singing with the the choir on Temple Square. Uh, the formerly known as the Mormon Tabernacle Choir. And um, it was a guest artist, you know, famous name. And he cracked uh, in one of the songs. And I still remember it. I thought, well, you know, I guess it happens to the very best. However, I'm not sure why it cracked necessarily. We're going to talk about why voices crack. And um, so... Got lots of comments here, and uh, the Scottish blood never leaves you. Thank you, Gordon. I uh, feel the same way. <laughs> I'm just very proud of my heritage. Um, okay, so let me just back up. And um, always welcome to Bonnie Land. <laughs> Thank you. So, um, all right, let me let me get in just a little bit more, little deeper into these comments or in, into uh, the topic today. Because what I want to do is I want to talk about um, because we've lost a little time. I'm going to try and go later. My my three up, my top of the hour has canceled, so I can go a little past that today. So we'll try and get all of this in today for you, and for those of you who are joining us after uh, the uh, live broadcast. I'm going to try and get right through all the main topics so that uh, you don't have to sit through a lot of topics. And then you guys uh, who are here on the call, I will answer your questions. Now, um, let's talk about why. Why does the voice crack? And why do we feel its strain at the top? In other words, ah, crack. Or, ah, you know, strain. The other way some people do it is, ah, ah, they just fade out while they're going higher. All right, so. Here we're going to talk about why this happens. I'm going to give you. Um, we're going to we're going to f give a fix to to uh, prevent it from happening, and then I'm going to give you a few exercises that you can actually use to help you stop doing this. Um, and because I really believe if if you'll do what I say, that uh, at the very worst you'll know why you're cracking, and at, you know, and very likely you'll be able to prevent your prevent this from cracking, prevent your voice from, from cracking. All right, so I've got some notes here because I don't want to leave anything out. Number one, why does this happen? First and foremost, and I think this may have been the reason why this pro that I was listening to cracked, is you, you just don't want to sing sick. If you have a sore throat or a cold uh, or other some malady going on, <clears throat> it is very hard to sing perfectly when you're ill and of course if you're really ill it's really hard the vocal cords get swollen and as soon as there's something different in the voice um, the larynx wants to rise up it wants to come up so fast so easily and, and as soon as that larynx comes up then it's going to crack and so that brings me to number two at the, the number, the second uh, common cause of cracking and straining while you're singing high notes is the larynx is rising. It's it's elev It's like you're going into swallowing mode. Watch what happens when I swallow. You see that bump goes up and comes back down. That's the larynx goes up. The epiglottis closes. Fluid or food or whatever slides past it over the top of it and g goes down the esophagus to the stomach. That's to protect us from, you know, it's to protect the trachea, it's to protect, to protect the windpipe from debris getting into the windpipe and into the lungs. 
I don't know if that ever makes it to the lungs. I think it, um, but you know what happens when you, when you uh, choke. When water slips down under, underneath the epiglottis or gets down there before the epiglottis closes, <coughs> you cough it out. We got to get the, we got to keep the fluids and food particles out of the trachea for, we all know, good reasons, right? You've probably heard of people choking to death or getting something caught there that um, causes you to, obst to obstruct the, uh, your breathing and, you know, you can die. So that's the reason when, when, the, when you go into swallowing mode, and that larynx comes up, you know, if you're singing and the larynx starts to go up, then um, the vocal cords start to pull apart at the bottom, uh, looking at them uh, vertically, the, the, the vocal folds pull apart while that epiglottis is sitting down on top of it. And, um, and so if we start singing and the larynx is going up, we're having a fight with ourselves. And we, and so that's the second part of this then. Why do we strain? It's because that larynx is coming up and there's mus extrinsic muscles pulling the larynx up and this causes us to crack. Mm -hmm. ah, 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 ah. It just breaks or strains. So that larynx coming up, the third reason is if we pull the chest voice too high. Uh, here's the it, chest voice is the bottom of your range. And this pulling of the bottom of the chest can only go on so long. And then you, you get uh, this, sudden, this sudden release, this sudden switch where the vocal cords... Uh, will uh, suddenly relax and the tension is gone, but now you're in falsetto. Oh, now I've disconnected into falsetto because I couldn't pull, keep pulling that weight up from the bottom of my, you know, from the chest voice. And so that causes cracks. We've seen some of these examples on YouTube. <laughs> Poor guy, he's famous. <laughs> I think it was a... Uh, you know, is that a baseball game? He's singing a Star Stangled Banner number, you know, the, the, the United States um, anthem. And, um, <laughs> and he cracks right at the end of his, you know, and you see the baseball players making a face. And anyway, it's very embarrassing, of course. But he's famous, internationally famous, world famous. Okay, so the, th the, the, other, the third reason then after... Um, singing sick uh, with, the, with uh, the larynx coming up, the third pulling up chest voice is going to cause your voice to crack as you sing higher. And fourth is the vowel. If the vowel uh, suddenly goes more, uh, I, I, I guess we could say suddenly opens too wide, then that's going to change the, the resonance uh, and it's going to change the, uh, the the vocal responses. The vocal cords respond to this widening of the vowel, and it suddenly splats. So if I said, uh, if I'm singing love, la, if I open up love, love to love, the vowel spreading, it's it very quickly it can cause your voice to crack. And this is why we struggle. When we're, we can do the exercises, but then when we start singing songs, we start pulling up the chest, or we start, because the, when the vowel spreads, the chest voice gets pulled up real quickly, and the larynx comes up, cracks, or at, at best strains, but it splats, and you can feel it and hear it and, and sense it in your own, your own body. So those vowels suddenly... Uh, spreading and it's not hard to do especially if we're in our bridges the bridge of our voice or in our head voice or at the top of our chest if we suddenly open that vowel up um, then or if the vowel is too wide it will cause 
those things to happen. Okay, so I would love to uh, get all your questions done here, but let me blast through these other things here. So here's the fix. Number one, if you're sick, don't sing. If you can possibly get out of it, you've got to try because not only is it going to be embarrassing if your voice doesn't perform well, but you could damage your voice singing sick. Uh, last week's go see last week's topic. We talked about uh, damaged vocal cords last week. Number two, or uh, second thing to do is keep. We've got to keep the larynx down. I'm going to give you exercises in a minute that are that will do just that. And uh, number three, don't pull the chest voice up, and um, that's a. You know, it's easier said than done. And I, again, I'll give you an exercise that will help you do that, help you not pull chest voice. Uh, and number, and, and, th and then the last one is, of course, we want to, we may have to narrow vowels. So let's just say, I'm, let, me, let me address that really quickly and say, if I'm singing love and I don't slightly narrow the vowel as I go higher, love, you can hear what's going to happen. Ah, it's going to crack. So if I'll slightly narrow that la to la, love, I can get through that middle area into head voice without straining, without the larynx coming up, without pulling the chest voice. So without pulling chest, without, without, um, without the vowel spreading, Without the, without the uh, larynx going up, I don't strain. And if I don't strain, it's most likely I'm not going to crack. And of course, I would never sing sick. <laughs> so that's the concept of narrowing a vowel. Now, um, here, is, here are a couple exercises. Let me give you about three exercises. First of all, to address uh, the, the, the larynx coming up, You've, we've got to learn to uh, what's called bridge. You have to learn to be able to sing in a mix of chest and head voice in that middle area. And one of the great exercises to do that, and uh, this is for all voices, is that bubble lip. And so you're saying, uh, propping the lips up and say, So I'm going through the area that wants to hike the larynx up, that wants to pull the chest voice up. I'm, I'm using a mix. So this causes me to mix in that area. Now, notice I'm not breaking. I'm not saying, I'm not letting it crack. I'm holding it together. Ladies, you'd be up here. So it's the same principle for you at your middle spot there, that bridge area, the A, B flat, B, C, C sharp. The, that area right there uh, is what we just did, just showed you with that bubble. Of, now, why is, that, why is this helpful? Number one, it, it helps your nervous system accept this transition of vibration up into your head and back down again. It keeps the larynx down, so there's no strain. And uh, it also allows the vocal cords to adjust appropriately in order to, for you to go to have that mix of chest and head voice or mix of chest and head so that you're able to get through there without having these bad things happen. So it's a very, very powerful exercise. If you did it on this one and a half scale, It's a first step, but it has to be, you have to start experiencing what it feels like to go from chest 
through that middle, up into your head waist, and back down again. Okay. Now, the, the other thing to do is um, you can... Now I'm going to give you a PDF here where you can get a bunch of these exercises, okay? The PDF, I'll tell you about that in a second. The other exercise that you can do to reduce, the, let's just say, the heaviness of chest voice is to... Um, there's a couple of them. Well, let's do this first. Keep the larynx down with this exercise. <laughs> a little bit dopey. I'll take it up here to where the ladies are. <laughs> that dopey sound on that gi keeps the larynx down and eliminates the, so I don't get any strain either because the larynx isn't going up, so I'm not fighting that, allows that vibration to go up into my head. The third one is the similar exercises. I'll do it on this one. I've just gone from the A flat to the A flat above middle C. A flat and below middle C, so the A flat three to A flat four. Ladies, I could do the same thing in your bridge. So there's a way to reduce the the chest voice, so I'm not so heavy in the bottom of my voice. Nay, 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 nay. However, I'm not going in the falsetto on the top because that same nay, nay, nay gets, gets me a little bit deeper into the top. So I'm not, so I'm getting a little of that head voice going. A little bit of head voice. Or in this case, I'm in mix, but there's a blend of chest and head. Nay, 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 nay. Now the larynx is slightly elevated here. It's not exactly where we speak. And so it's good to do the gee 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 and the bubble lip with, with the with the nay 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 because we do want the larynx to to be a little bit lower. But it's not as high as when you go on the swallowing mode and get all that strain and stress in your voice. All right, so those are three exercises. Now, where can you get these exercises and a bunch more where you're fighting the pull, you know, the pull the chest up, where you're fighting the larynx rising up. And uh, I'll tell you, in the description below this video, once this thing is uh, uploaded, and it will just go automatically after we're done here, is a PDF that says, it's a, a link. It says, get, get, um, get my vocal type. Get my vocal type. It's a free PDF, and it's got links to the vocal test. It'll give you your vocal, you'll take the test, get your vocal type, more than likely your pulled chest high larynx. There are links to your vocal type, so pulled chest high larynx or flip falsetto or uh, light chest, no chest, or even mix. There are links to those videos that you can watch about your vocal type. And then you can down, and I show you how to do exercises. There's about 15 minutes of exercises for, hmm, is it mix or for pulled chest high larynx? Anywhere from 12 to 15 minutes of exercises that are going to help you do exactly what I'm showing you today. All right? Now, I'm done with my talk. I hope that's been helpful. Let me address some of these questions here today for you guys, okay? So, um, <clears throat> going back up to um, your questions. Stephen, hi. I don't think I said hi to you. Um, let me see here. Uh, da, 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 da. Okay. Sunas says, uh, I, I tried to hit notes in about F5 to G5, but how do I do it without falsetto, like a rock singer can? Should be comparable for pop songs also, not classical. As soon as that exercise that I gave you, where you can do it without falsetto, now you're, you're way up there. I don't know whether you're a female singer. Maybe someone has already, maybe you've already told us later on, but uh, if you're a female singer or uh, a tenor that's trying to, you know, get these notes, a high tenor, 
same exercise. Nay, 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 nay. Now, that's the C right in the middle there. I don't know if I can get up that high myself. Let me just see if I can. Nay, 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 nay. That's not falsetto. Here's the G. Nay, 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 nay. Slightly under, maybe. Nay, 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 nay. Now, that nay, nay, nay is very powerful. The larynx, as I mentioned, slightly elevated, but it will connect the top so that you're not in falsetto. Don't do it really loud. You want to do it on medium volume or medium soft even, uh, like I, I tried to illustrate there. And that will start to fill that in for you. And then you can do the same thing on this scale. <laughs> or the gee, gee, gee. Now, that may, be, uh, may appear to you being more classical kind of an exercise, but it applies to everybody because we're keeping the larynx down. And that's what you've got to do to get those notes. You've got to have the larynx down. So I would do the dopey gee, and I'd do the bubble. you got to get used to producing the tone, producing your, um, your, your voice, without the larynx coming up, without pulling the chest voice up. And those exercises will help retrain your muscle memory. Okay, there's some conversations going on here that I guess I don't need to get into, including toilet sessions. <laughs> oh, good, Dion. So uh, I guess we're on later on today. Awesome. Um, okay, so yes, I have four years ago. Let me jump into some other... Cracks happen most of the time. Not sure if this is because of fear, someone says. Uh, Myrna, hi, Myrna. What is your vocal range, guys and ladies? Okay, so you guys have some conversations going on, which is awesome. Very, very new to all this. Many problems to fix. Okay, that's Gordon. That's okay, Gordon. We all have been there. Original. Hi, Original Vonster. Nice to have you here today. Yes, I can't sing Rolling in the Deep without cracking or on all unless I make it all head voice. Okay, uh, so that's a, a tough song because uh, much of it is sung at the top of your chest. And so, again, I have, to, I have got to recommend, I can't recommend more strongly, go get that PDF, get my vocal type because that will help you mix in those areas that are so hard to sing so that you've got some element of your chest as well as head mixed in and it doesn't go so light. So get that PDF and get started on those exercises so you can learn to bridge. You can learn to mix through the bridge of your voice. Sunis says, um, Mine about G2 or G4 chest mixed falsetto or something close to yelling up to A5. Uh, okay, so G2 to G4 chest mixed and then falsetto or something close to that yelling up to A5. Okay, Sunis, then this stuff that I've just told you is absolutely what you should do. Parth says, I'm 17, my voice starts cracking uh, from uh, F4. I also get throat tension. So Partha is experiencing something that is hard right now, um, harder than for all the rest of us. If you're a teenager and you're going through your vocal change, then it's, um, it's a double whammy. It's really hard, but you can. You can start making progress, Partha, on that. Um, you can begin to do exactly the exercises that I showed today to keep that larynx down and, and work through that bridge area. You have to, give, you have to be able to go through there, excuse me, go through there without it cracking or without straight, you know, you, you've got to, so that exercise, the bubble up will really help. The gee, gee, gee. Oh, 
or nay, 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 nay. For you, Parth, I would try it really soft, that nay, 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 really soft. Not in falsetto, but just quietly in your, in your lighter voice. Kyle B says, I crack at the E4 in normal circumstances, but I force myself to stay dopey. I can do my full range. Yeah, Kyle, <coughs> that was my life too. E4, I'd stop. I wouldn't go any higher than that because I would crack or have to yell. So those three exercises I showed you are the way to go. Get that vocal type. If you haven't gotten those, <coughs> your vocal type and, the, and downloaded the exercises, get on those, you guys. This is what it's all about. And this will make a huge difference. As soon as it says uh, support Partha, the power doesn't come from your vocal cords, but from your, from your breath. Uh, you know, I have to kind of disagree with, it's a combination of, you know, obviously if there was no air, you would have no sound. But if there were no vocal cords, you would have, you'd have lots of air, you'd have no sound. So it's a, it's a balance between the air and the vocal cord, the interaction of the chords with the air that creates uh, our sound. And the real power kicks in when you can do it without squeezing it, without raising the larynx, without um, straining it. That's when the real power starts to kick in because the vocal cords with the air are able to do it. Um, Monica says, my question is, on the passaggio, hi Monica, by the way, on the passaggio, I have to let it go a bit and go into the mix. For me, it's always been difficult to pull up my chest voice on the passaggio. Is that all right? Yeah, Monica, it's different for everybody, but in, in many instances, it's we really do have to um, approach our bridge in a um, slightly, well, I wouldn't say we necessarily have to do it quietly, but we can't do it in an open, full chest, right? So if I said, oh, now, I'm, now I'm in my bridge, it's really hard to just full chest it and then immediately go into your mix. So you're talking about the approach to the bridge, and it's okay to start to mix even before you get there. So I closed the vowel down a little bit and was able to, basically, I was starting to bridge a little bit earlier. I started to mix a little bit earlier. It's always okay to pull down mix. It's never okay to pull up chest. And so I think you're exactly right. You're tuning in to what it feels like with your voice. Now, one of the things you want to be able to do, though, is not back away. You, you want to get to the point where you're able just to say, ah, well, let me see. <coughs> ah, 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 ah. You'll get it though. If you're if you're setting it up right, if you're doing it correctly, eventually you'll be able to do it, drive right through, right, and not back away or or tiptoe through the bridge. You'll you'll be able to do it. But it's okay to go in early. It's okay to begin mixing early, and that will that'll help you do that. Uh, let me know if that answers your question. All right, some other comments here. Um, it looks like we're having a discussion on food. <laughs> okay, so you showed head voice, I guess. Well, the G5, the four, the uh, F4 to G, sorry, the F5, the F4 to F5, takes me into my head voice. I met my head voice on the G, G4. So yes, <coughs> for a guy, that's definitely head voice. For the ladies, your head voice begins, sorry, <coughs> your head voice begins on the, G5, on the G5. 
Hey, CSI, for the life of me, I don't know how to apply the nay nay exercise to actual singing songs. How is it applied? Sorry, it's a dumb, not a dumb question. Uh, let me think. Let me see, what would be a good example of that? Um, well, you could take any song, any song that's got you um, where you maybe you just want to have a little bit a, a stronger connection or you're unable to, to make the connection through without it cracking or breaking. You would just say... Uh, in the key that uh, Paul sings it in. Now, if I raise the key and go up um, a half a step. I'm getting through there. I'm not breaking. I'm not cracking. And uh, it's so it's holding. It's being solid. So I took that a half a step higher than he sings it. I could go up another half step. Nay, 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 nay. So once I'm able to do all of those with that nay, 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 don't do it loud, but just make sure that you can get it. Uh, connected and smooth, but then go back to the go back to the original key, or go back to the song and say, "Hey Jude." Maybe I have to do a little bit kind of funny words. Hey Jude, don't be a. Hey Jude, take a sad song, take a sad song. So I'm a little bit on the kind of the exaggerated side with the words. And make, make it better, remember to let her into your... So if I can do it with the exaggerated words, now I want to try and get a little more normal. <coughs> hey Jude, don't be afraid. <laughs> what are the words there, you guys? Take a sad song. And my wife's name is Judy. So I call her Jude all the time. I should know the words, huh? And make... Take a sad song and make it better. So just start out with the nay, 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 really exaggerated, then maybe a little less exaggerated. Take it up a key a little bit, maybe another key, then uh, you get it all connected, then come back and do it in the key you want it in and, uh, and do it kind of funny words, a little bit exaggerated words like the nay, nay, nay. And that if that holds, then come back towards the more normal and then eventually completely normal. See how that works. So it says, uh, uh, you show your, okay, so you showed your head voice, I guess. Yep. Uh, da, da, da. Please remind how, could you please remind how to keep the larynx down? Hi, uh, Presmic. Yes. The, uh, the vocal, the exercise um, for the gee, gee, gee will keep the larynx down. Gee, gee, gee. So if I said, duh, duh, you can see the lyrics pulse down. I say, duh, duh. So I just say, gee, uh, the dopey sound with the gee. Gee, 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 gee. If I lose the dopey sound, the larynx goes up. Gee, gee, gee. That'll keep the larynx down, that exercise. That's also, you get those exercises, you guys, in that PDF I talked to you about. Get your free, uh, get your vocal type. And um, once you get your vocal type, download the exercises for your vocal type, and that'll be there on several different scales. Gordon, uh, in a fun wee competition on Smool, I got confrontation from Chekhl and Hyde. Whoa, Gordon, that's a heavy duty. Find it tough to find power in my voice in the higher range. Well, confrontation is a, like you know one of the hardest songs you could have cho <laughs> could have gotten. 
Um, yes. So again, I would do the nay, nay, nay um, in that higher in any in any part of your higher range where you're having one, uh, issues where you need to have more power. Um, nay, 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 nay. Let me see. Nay, 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 nay. Let me see. I, I've lost the the melody, but uh, this is not a something. You know. Anyway, uh, if, if I were better, I'd remember that that um, tune. But put the nay, nay, nay in it, just like I showed um, uh, CSI, and um, and then do a, do funny words with it, and then try and get more normal and see if you can maintain some of that. Uh, feeling of the nay, nay, nay in the words. Martin says, I could not distinguish my head voice. I could not distinguish my head voice. Martin, part of it is where are you singing? If you know you're singing uh, higher, it's either going to be head voice or falsetto. Now, sometimes we can't distinguish falsetto from head voice. And that's a, that's a challenge. Uh, it takes a while to figure that out. Structurally, it's different. They're different from each other. The vocal folds are, um, the muscle in the vocal folds are not participating in the sound when you're in falsetto. And so there is, different, there is a different feeling to it. And that's what you have to start to identify. So for everybody that's wondering, if I said... <laughs> See, I can I can let my I know how to go into falsetto, so I can break into falsetto. Now that may have sounded like I was in head voice. So I can break into falsetto, even though it was light and airy and breathy. Well, it wasn't breathy, but it was light, and that wasn't necessarily airy. It was just I was not I was doing it a softer volume, it, um, I could still disconnect it. Now, if I'm in falsetto, ah, I, can't, I can't go into falsetto because I'm already in it. So I can't disconnect. So that's one way I can check myself. If I can disconnect, then I know I'm in like a connected head voice of some sort. If I can't go into falsetto, then I know I'm already in it. Now I'm never in falsetto. Um, I'm always in head voice. But uh, at first, it is a bit of a challenge to discern that in your own voice. But that's one way to do it. The other way to do it is, if you're in falsetto, you have to crack back into chest. Whereas in head voice, blends into your chest. Maybe that'll help. Monica says, I think I have mix, but I don't like a lot of the sound of it. It is a bit heady. It sounds more classical than contemporary sound. Yeah, Monica, um, it's, that's a challenge at first. So it, it's really rare that I've had, uh, in, in my experience, it didn't happen. And in many students' experiences, uh, when you're first, first starting to mix, it's still hard to press into that mix so that you've got real strength and real power. So at first it might be, maybe you can't get any more power in it, you know. But eventually it comes. You just want to make sure that you stay stay with the the right coordination of the chords the vocal cords will eventually get it so i i've just learned over time uh to let let go not try and squeeze not try and make it powerful and then as i let go i kind of lean into that feeling of letting go And there's no difference in those anymore. 
But at first, one, there was some that were lighter right in that bridge area. But over time, that's, you know, I've discovered, you know, that I've, as long as I stay without, don't try and, don't try and be big and powerful as I let go and, and not have any tension in it and then lean into that feeling of letting go. And this is very, it's a very subjective thing I'm telling you. This is what it feels like to me. It's possible, don't give up. And it can be so fun because it can be very strong without any tension or without any uh, squeezing or breaking. Hi, uh, let me see, we've got uh, uh, Mike Lace. Nice to have you here today. I don't know exactly how to pronounce your name, but should I be concerned if I get a headache or pain near the eyes when I'm singing in a high head voice? I haven't properly exercised my head voice before. I, am, I, I think that normally that shouldn't happen. You shouldn't be getting a headache or feel any pain near your eyes when you're in your head voice, and even for a high head voice, because there's no tension, no strain, no reason for that to happen. Now, I can't speak to your situation. Maybe there's, maybe you've got some kind of sinus issue or some other things going on. If it continues, I would go see the doctor and just have them check, make sure that there's not some obstruction there or something, you know, in the cartilage or some some area that they could check and see if there is any. And uh, and get that looked at, you know. But it might resolve. It might it might resolve over time. Uh, Arash, hi. Thank you so much, Chuck. Uh, are all your live classes scheduled on Tuesdays? Yes, at this time. Well, as long as my computer works well, we begin at the top of the hour. Anna, Cocos. Lots of coaches recommend Fry for connection mix or even therapy. I did it for a while and it does feel healthy to me. What's your opinion about it? You know, there's some very good reasons for Fry. If the vocal folds, um, if there's a chink, or in other words, if, if when the vocal folds come together, there's a little bit of a, a at the, um, you know, either anterior or posteriorly, if, well, I guess it would be uh, anteriorly, if there's if there's an area of the cords that won't come together, that fry will get them together, and so that's very useful. Uh, and but it's it's not it's not a this is the normal slow motion wave function of the vocal folds. When you're in a fry, they're kind of like this. Uh, so. Um, yeah, just be aware. There's a difference in the. They're not. It's not really a singing condition, but you can use it to get your vocal cords to come together if you're having trouble, and it's particularly useful in younger females, where um, they have a difficulty. And there's a little so-called chink, that is that the cord structure is not closing completely. Then the fry is very useful. I don't use it much, but. Um, Beyond that, I can't really. I don't really have any um, any use for it at this point. Dear, oh hi, dear, Kuya Helen, hi, hello sir. I'm always watching videos. How to learn falsetto? Uh, I guess falsetto. So um, I don't teach falsetto. I teach you how not to go in the falsetto by using your head voice, and so. Um, the exercises that I teach you to do. So go get those exercises. Download the free PDF. Get the take the test. Get your exercises for your vocal type, and it will help you get into your. I was in head voice. I wasn't in falsetto. So I don't need falsetto. I can go as high as I want, pretty much. I never sing up that high, but that was the that was the G, five. And um, so I'll teach you how to get in the head voice. And then if you want to break in the falsetto for stylistic concern, things, you can choose that. 
You can choose to do that. Let's see. Martha, is it that when we sing higher without falsetto is mixed voice? Um, in the bridge, yes. And in your head voice, in, in, uh, in that middle area for, uh, well, for us guys, when we're in head voice, um, the answer is yes. But um, when we sing higher without falsetto is mixed voice. It's not mixed. Strictly speaking, mixes everywhere. But in terms of just definition right now, when we're in our head voice, it's not mixed. It's, it might be mixed with other head voice overtones. Um, Kyle, yes, it was excellent. Thanks, Kyle. Gordon says, thanks, I'll try it. Great. I, I don't get to falsetto, but not sure whether I'm in mix. Okay, well, th hopefully that's been answered. Um, it is powerful. Okay, um, this is not a dream, my friend, and this will never end. <laughs> Thanks, Gordon. Yeah, <laughs> awesome song, man. <laughs> yeah, I like to learn that myself. It's just crazy. Yeah. Yeah, fun song, guys. If you hadn't heard it, hey, Kevin, I don't know if you're still around or not. Hey, that's a good one. I was wondering about the same thing. This is Kevin Richards, you guys, from RPM Vocal Studio. Kevin, if you're still here, everybody look him up. Uh, most likely pressure in the sinus cavity. I was wondering the same thing. And uh, so it's possible um, our comment earlier about pain when they go into head voice. Thanks, Kevin, for that insight. Monica, uh, thanks, Chuck. But my sound is quite powerful now. It is just the quality of the sound. I do not know. Okay, so, you know, Monica, here's the thing. I don't think we should be necessarily chasing sound as much as chasing correct coordination. So in other words, we want to keep the tension out. We want to maintain good, you know, breath, good breath technique and so forth. And we want to be able to, um, you know, when our vowels right and all the other things combined and the sound will take care of itself. So that's one of the things that um, if we're, if you stay focused on the correct condition and the coordination, everything that will come. I will, I promise you it will come. Um, okay. Uh, Kevin says fry is dangerous over time. Too much laryngeal tension builds up. The voice works on air pressure. Yeah. So, you know, when we're talking about how, if, if the chord structure is just kind of beaten like a piece of uh, bacon on the, you know, uh, it's just not a, it's not a condition of singing. So I think uh, I'm totally in agreement with Kevin. Uh, Monica, oh, okay, comment to Monica, thanks. All right, so you, you guys, it looks like we're, uh, we're to the end. Thanks for joining me today. Sorry for the tech issues. Uh, hasn't happened, maybe, but one other time. But uh, for those of you who joined late, we, my computer completely crashed three minutes before our start time. So I had to reboot it twice, actually, to get my camera to, to be functioning. So, Okay, do you have a go-to exercise for WCC Productions? Um, I can answer your question, WCC, and then I've got to get going. I've got a student coming in a few minutes here. So um, looks like I'm not going to see it here. So I'm going to sign 